Helen Blady. It's 23 minutes to two if you're watching the clock. We've been talking about flying and whether or not you enjoy it, whether or not you uh, perhaps leave it to the last minute if you've ever missed a flight. We're also talking about what life is really like as a single parent. There was this programme on the telly last night called Single Mums on Benefits where Mylene Class made it her business to highlight the challenges that single parents face. She says being a single mum is the best club she's ever been in. Claire Jacobs blogs as the single parent pessimist. Hi Claire. Hi, uh, you're right. Uh, yeah, I've got the feeling that you're not overly positive about life as a single parent. <laughs> um, well, this is the thing, just because my name is Single Parent Pessimist, it doesn't mean I am one. I think it's just I'm known for being quite realistic, and a lot of people like to call it pessimism, so that's why I sort of chose the name. But, okay. Um, I like to be honest, so sometimes it's nice, and sometimes it's not so nice, I think. So did you watch this programme last night? Oh, hey, I was actually flying back to the country last night when it was on, but I've read about it today because there's been a lot of controversy about about Mylene herself, I think, you know, cut, turning up with apparently expensive watches and nice big cars, talking to people about how poor they are. That's what I've heard and what I've mm. read about in the papers. But I'm, I'm keen to catch up on it later today because I want to see, you know, what she did and if it was any good. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't know much about it, but I've read bits about she'd sort of seen some... Some working mums, I think. Some on benefits, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. And basically say it's the best club she's ever been in. Uh, would you agree with that? Is it the best club you've ever been in? To be honest, it's kind of the only club I know. Right. Um, my my little boy was six weeks old when his dad walked out on us. So um, I only had six weeks of being a mum and a dad and what's, you know, seeing what that was like. Um, but for me, it was an incredible. It's a very, very hard club. It's very difficult. Um there's a lot of a lot of downs in, in initially when you've got a newborn and you it's a first child and you don't know what you're doing. But you know now he's he's just turned four. I I've been doing it so long that it's all I know really, and I, I like it. And mm. I'm at the point now where I've I've kind of met someone and and sometimes talking about having children and I get scared about doing it with another parent having two of us because I'm used to making the decisions. I love the fact that I. I have full control on how he's parented, you know, the sort of experiences he has and all that sort of stuff. And I think I'm now a bit more set in my ways. And I really do like that, you know, everything is pretty much the way I want it to be for him. Mm. And the bond that we've got is so strong. I don't think, I think it's a lot more intense compared to when there's two parents. I think, you know, I'm awesome. the only constant for him, really. I was talking to Judith a little bit earlier on, who's been a, a single mum for well over 10 years. Her daughter's 13. Mm. And she was telling me that whilst the bond is really strong between them and they are best friends, although, you know, when you've got a teenage daughter, sometimes that wobbles a little bit. Um, mm. She said she finds it incredibly isolating. Uh, she has no social life uh, and she can see no real positives to it. I wonder if you understand where she's coming from. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> Especially when they're young, um, before they reach the age where they can go to friends for sleepovers and pop out and be out, you know, he's very, you know, he's four, so from 7.30 each night, I'm sort of imprisoned in my home every day. I can't just pop to the shop for it if I've forgotten some milk or something, because I'm on my own. Um, so it's compl I do get that. It's very isolating, especially when the toughest part for me was the first sort of year or two when he was up a lot during the night for feed and things like that or just wouldn't sleep and was teething. There's no one to even take over for five minutes and I'd pace the flat with him all night, knackered, and I you know, I had nowhere to go for two minutes just to you know, just just to breathe and calm myself down and, and that can be really difficult and I, I suffer from anxiety and depression anyway, so that kind of didn't help that situation because at that time his dad had no contact with him at all, so I literally did it all the time, 24-7 on my own. Couldn't afford to pay for childcare, um, but obviously then started trying to... I went back to work again, but I'm self-employed, so I work when he sleeps. Um, so there's never any, yeah, there's never any me time to just sit and be happy and, you know, and chill out and... Yeah, and particularly if, if, you, if, you, if you suffer a bit, a bit from anxiety and, and depression anyway, uh, me time is the one thing that can pull you through sometimes. So how on earth did you manage? Um, do you know what? I, kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I think I found a lot of solace through um, social media in terms of Facebook. There are single parenting groups on there, big forums for UK specifically, where I could sit out of an evening and just 
read other people's messages sort of saying, you know, I feel like this tonight and, oh, anyone else doing this? Anyone else sick of just sitting in? And Or they'd have random funny chats about life or what they were watching and so you kind of felt like you weren't on your own. Even though it's behind a screen, you know, you, there was other single parents in the country feeling exactly the way you were right at that point and that would give you a bit of comfort and I found a lot of that and obviously the blog that I write is sometimes a space for me to vent about life and about the fact that he wasn't seeing his dad and how hard it could be. But it was also, I use it to talk about how great things can be. You know, I think we have a lot of achievements. I mean, recently I wrote a post about the 10 worst things about being a single parent, which I think is doing the rounds now. <laughs> um, but I'm also planning to do the 10 best things because it isn't all bad. It's hard work, but it's so rewarding because you know you've done it all yourself. I read your uh, post of the 10 worst things about being <laughs> a single parent. Uh, I don't have any children, so I, I can't really comment. But one of the things that struck me was this idea of you having to be good cop and bad cop. Mm, yes. How do you deal with that? Because it's always, you know, kids learn to play their mum off against their dad all the time. How, do they, do, are they going to play you off against yourself? How do you deal with that? Um, it's kind of, well, they kind of find other people to do it. So like, if you're, you know, I go to my mum's and you might try and play nanny off of me and things like that. Or, you know, he'll compare, well, hang on, we, we go to play dates. Well, his mum said yes, you know, so you, they find ways of doing it. But, yeah, in terms of, I feel a lot of the time like, I end up being bad cop more because I feel like I'm constantly trying to put the boundaries in. Mm. And there's no time for me to be fun time. And now he's just recently started seeing his dad at weekends. This is a completely new revelation to me. I'm noticing now even more he tries to play us because Daddy comes in and Daddy plays. Yeah. Daddy doesn't have to do the boundaries, you know, seven days a week. Daddy doesn't have to put in the rules and do all the washing and do the chores as well as find time to play. He just plays with him, you know, so he, seem, he sees him as, like, on this pedestal and I'm boring mum that moans a lot, you know. It's kind of... So, I'm again, I'm now at a new point where I have new... Good, good cop, bad cops now with the actual his dad yeah. is now back in his life. It's quite, it, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And it's, I imagine, I mean, I've got, I've got friends who are, are single parents, and one of the things that they tell me is that um, the partner, whether it be a man or a woman, tends to be the one that buys the expensive Christmas presents and birthday presents as well. And how do you deal with stuff like that? How do you explain that? It's not always going to be the case. That kind. Of, it's, it must be so difficult, Claire. I mean, I don't want to be negative about it, but right. I, I can see far more negatives than I can see positives. Um, yeah, it's the way you look at it, though, isn't it? I think it's really, it's hard work, but I, you know, I, I plan the child with him. I didn't realise he would leave to go and do what he did. You know, it's it's kind of, you don't plan it, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to leave my child. I love him to pieces, and I'll work through it. And, and it, what you remember is it's not forever. But it, within a clip, you know, he's four now, and I can't believe that. He's about to start school, and again, there's another chunk of time where... I won't see him now all day, five days a week, and pretty soon he won't be interested in spending time with mummy. He'll be out with his friends, you know, and, and even then he'll be out at uni or jobs, and it'll go so quick, and then I'll be sitting here going, oh, what are we going to do now? Because <laughs> you're used to always being doing something. You can't rest because you're used to filling every fresh, precious bit of time with getting the washing done, or oh, let's go and do this quickly while he's doing that, and you sort of, you can't rest, and it's going to be, yeah, I'm already worrying about that now, and he's only four. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could give a piece of advice to somebody listening who, for whatever reason, is about to become a single parent or will do in the future, what would you say to them? Biggest thing, because I know how, how isolating and how lonely it can be and how hard it can be, is, is to be vocal. I didn't tell people how hard I just dealt with it, but actually that, that impacted on my mental health. So whether it be you telling strangers in your single parent forums on Facebook or you telling your mum or your friends that actually I'm struggling, you need to be honest. You're not a bad parent for having bad days because we de we never get a break unlike other parents. Not even to go for a, a wee for two minutes on our own. You know, it, it is hard, but it's not a weakness to go and to vocalise that, whether it be through a blog, whether it be telling a friend, or whether it be just talking. Yeah, like I said on the forums, just talk about it because that, you need to get it out so that it doesn't eat you up. That would be my best advice, I think. Claire, thank you for sparing us the time. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> Claire Jacobs, who blogs as the single parent pessimist, and it's a very well-written blog. I would recommend it. I would recommend it for a read, even if you haven't got children. John Griff is here. He is. Bonjour.